Well, it's 2020 and I have a ton of new gear and this is the first backpacking trip of the season for me and I am trying out new gear, testing out new gear and I've taken some of it out for the very first time. So why don't I do something I've never done before and show you guys what's in my pack. <laughs> So I have pretty much seen every other backpacker do this, but yet I just never have. Not because I have anything against it, just because never taken the time, never had the opportunity. But here I am on my first backpacking trip of the season. It's a beautiful evening. I'm about to unload my gear to set up camp. Why don't I take this opportunity to tell you guys what's in my pack. And this year I'm really excited to do that because I have a ton of new gear, new gear to me, new gear that I haven't seen a lot of other people use before and I'm testing it all out. Now, some of this gear I used last year and some of it is brand new on the trail this year for the first time ever. So this isn't going to be a review. It's just gonna be telling you guys what I'm bringing in the 2020 season, what I'm testing out. You guys can ask me your questions and I'll let you know as things go how I feel about it. I will at the end of this video leave a playlist of the gear that I talk about in this video as I add those reviews over the coming year because I do plan on reviewing a lot of this gear and some of it I already have. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with what's actually in this pack. And to start, I'm gonna set the backpack aside and talk about what I'm wearing. That's right, what I'm wearing because it's all new, at least all new to me. These, if you've seen some of my more recent videos, are the Satu Adventure Pants from Outdoor Vitals. I love these pants, I really do. They have a vent on the side so that you can air things out, as you can tell. They really dry fast. They're great. You can check out the full review of these pants up in the cards, they're amazing. Uh, this is an outdoor research shirt. I actually can't even remember the name of it. I didn't buy this shirt, it was given to me as a gift and I'm pretty sure it was secondhand. I have no idea if the tag is even there, but I decided I wanted to try hiking in a button up shirt for the first time this year and this is literally the first time I've ever done it. So far so good. The other two things that I wore on this trip so far is my hat. This is seriously just a really cheap knockoff Tilly hat that you can get at any basic dollar store or Walmart. It cost me all of $1.25 and honestly, I've been using it since I started backpacking four years ago. I love it. It's pretty good. Also, a fanny pack. Never used a fanny pack before. This is my first ever fanny pack, courtesy of Jason from The Best Backpacker, who is now so good. And so far, this fanny pack has been so good. I'm still getting used to using a fanny pack and I'm gonna have to figure out a few things along the way. But so far, I've just put everything that I might possibly need on the trail in my fanny pack and it's probably overstuffed and I didn't need all of what's in there. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out still. Why don't you let me know in the comments below if you use a fanny pack and what you put in it. And if you don't use a fanny pack, what do you put in your hip belts? Because I've always just put in snacks. But can you put other things in your hip belt pockets? Now that I've used this, I've started to think maybe you can, if they're big enough. We'll get into the contents of this in just a quick second, but let's talk about the backpack. This is the Drop.com and Granite Gear Crown V60. It's a 60 liter bag. And what's really awesome about it is I just think it is the best intermediate backpacking bag. In fact, it might actually be the best beginner's backpacking bag because it can take you through the stages of being a beginner to being an intermediate, even to being more on the pro level side. I really like this system so far. I get into more of that in the review for this bag, which I have done, but haven't edited. I'll put that in the playlist at the end. So let's start taking some things out. Hiking poles, trekking poles. I don't like using trekking poles. I really don't. These are element equipment, carbon fiber trekking poles that I got from drop.com. I did a big mass drop slash drop.com purchase like last year and I've been using that gear ever since. Besides the fact that the first one I got was busted and they replaced it free of charge, which was awesome. They've been serving me pretty good. They come in under 15 ounces for the pair of them. So they're under a pound, which is one of the things that I really Really like about them. The other thing I bought last year sort of out of necessity was the Eddie Bauer the Ascent rain jacket. It's under seven ounces if I'm not mistaken. It's super ultra light. 
it was on sale, which I love. And so far, I've been super happy with it. I love how lightweight it is. I actually love the bright orange color. It's backcountry forward orange. Come on, people, how perfect is that? Yeah, Soxic sunglasses. I never use sunglasses on the trail. I probably should have left these at home. Oh, my Mora knife. I would never normally use this on a backpacking trip. I know I'm gonna get a ton of hate for that. I'm sorry, you guys, it's just true. Any type of trip where I need to process my own wood, where it's not supplied by the park, or it isn't even allowed to have a campfire, I don't bother bringing this, but tonight I'll have a campfire, so I'll need that. I have a Benz Ultralight Mosquito Net. Uh, rarely use that as well, so far so good and my emergency kit. This has an emergency blanket, a compass, hand warmers, my first aid kit, backup fire, no, my fire starting kit, and I think that's about it. Oh, and duct tape. And, oh, just on this trail, just because I wasn't sure how my uh, Bic Mini was on fuel, I got an extra lighter. Super fuel, this is heavy duty. You don't need something this big, but I got it anyways. Again, something I wouldn't normally bring, a saw. But, like I said, gonna be having a fire tonight, which means processing wood. Of course, bear spray, as you can tell. Uh, this bad boy has been with me from the very beginning, and I've still got another six months left with it. My first bear spray. Um, smart water bottle, you guys know all about that, I'm sure. Mmm, five cent candies. Mmm, you're jealous. I know you are. And a real game changer for me this season is my filtration system. I have gone with the Be Free One Liter to partner with my smart water bottle. Don't worry, I'm not gonna throw this. I'm afraid that would be a bad idea, but only used it on two trips, or rather this is the second trip I've used it on, but so far, really impressed. Really, really impressed. Game changer. So that's everything I have on the outside. Let's get inside. Last year, um, Devon from Backcountry Exposure, thank you so much, Devon, um, hooked me up with a friends and family discount from Arcteryx, and I got the Adam LT. I love this jacket, not just on the trail. I wear this jacket all winter long, pretty much every single day. It's synthetic, it's not super ultra light, but I love it. For now, it's my puffy. I will probably be upgrading to something down in the future. Oh, you know how you hear everyone talk about don't pack your fears. That's what this is. Literally, as I was packing, I had everything packed up and I thought, but what if I'm too cold when I sleep at night? Mm, I should probably throw in a liner just in case. So I got my Thermolite Reactor Extreme. This thing is like for the middle of winter. Now I do have the regular reactor and I just didn't bother to grab it because this was on hand. I'm not gonna need this tonight. Food bag, nothing exciting in there. Uh, oh, this is just a toque, earmuffs and uh, gloves in case it gets a little chilly. This is also a piece of gear that's been with me since the very beginning. It's the TAC Life headlamp. And yeah, it's got the whole features. I probably should switch this out for a thing of shock cord. I just haven't yet, but uh, maybe one day. Fuel and my new cook kit. I'm not gonna tell you guys too much about this bad boy because it is prototype 1.0. I am going to refine a few things and uh, this is just its second mated voyage. So we'll see how it does. Inside there is the rest of my cook kit, but more importantly, my GSI mug. I don't go anywhere without this. As far as what's in my cook kit, well, this season I'm packing the BRS, I've got my Bic Mini, I've got a homemade tinfoil windscreen and a chamois and a little bit of a sponge. So that's my cook kit, except for I have the Human Gear Duo uh, spoon, which Dan Becker tipped me off in one of his videos for, and I love it. Thank you, Dan. This is my clothing bag. Yes, I have probably too many stuff sacks. I know. Maddie is going to leave a comment in the comments. He's going to be like, get rid of those stuff sacks. He hates stuff sacks. And normally I do too, but I really don't like wet clothes or a wet toque. So what I've got for my thermal layers is the brand new Outdoor Vitals Dragon Wool. 
I've got the top as well as the long johns. And so far I have been loving these. Um, so those are fantastic as well as, oh, another base layer just in case, extra underwear just in case, because I'm also wearing the dragon wool underwear under here. And it's the first time I've ever taken them on a longer hike. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about them. So I wanted an extra backup pair just in case. These are a new addition as of this last winter. Super fluffy, warm thermal socks. They're supposed to be just in my winter kit, but I haven't been able to bring myself to get rid of them from my summer kit yet. <laughs> but I probably will. I also kind of use them as my camp booties because they got this kind of like thickened bottom on them. So those are pretty okay. And oh, more extra socks just in case. That is my clothing. Next up, my sit pad, backcountry forward green. I have an orange one as well, and I'm gonna sit on this because ah, that log's getting uncomfortable. Now, the moment you guys have all been waiting for, I know you guys want to know, what do I use as a ground sheet? Now, I know that's not actually what you wanted to know. I'm just gonna tell you anyways. Um, I use a Mylar blanket for a ground sheet year round because I'm a cold sleeper, and this reflects a little bit more heat back up. <sighs> the tent, oh the tent, the Danderston and drop.com Xmid. I think it's fair to say that this is my first ever ultralight tent and I've been using this for a year now. I used it all winter as well. So good things, I'll do a full review of that later on. After that, I've got the Trekology 2.0 pillow, which I love because it comes with a pad strap. However, I made my own pad strap. Why did I make my own pad strap, you ask? Well, I'll get to that when I get to my sleeping pad. New to me this winter, and it's been my winter sleeping pad as well as the summer sleeping pad, is the Outdoor Vitals Insulated Sleeping Pad. I'm a cold sleeper, so I need an insulated sleeping pad year round because I also go camping up in the Canadian Rockies where basically it can get to below freezing at any given point. That's that. That's the sleeping pad. My sleeping bag. This has been my sleeping bag for the past year and a half, two years. And it is the Teton Altos 20 degrees Fahrenheit, plus 20, uh, which is about minus seven degrees Celsius sleeping bag. It's been out of stock for the past little while. And I believe it's just coming back in stock after COVID is all done. Yeah, I've got things to say, but I'll be talking all about that in my gear review video when I release that. So that's what's in my bag, but I haven't talked to you guys about what's in this. Now the Granite Gear backpack does come with a brain. I've taken it off this trip to lower my base weight. Um, so I took off the brain and since Jason sent me this, I figured I would transfer some of the contents that would normally go in my brain into this. This has also become my toiletries, just kind of everything kit. I have Deep Woods Off, my inhaler, cause I have asthma, Purell and shovel for pooping, uh, sunscreen, body glide for chafing, a thermometer so I know what temperature it is. Uh, Luco tape, this stuff's amazing. Uh, some pills just in case, you know, if you ever need it. Uh, extra chapstick, this is a lifesaver. Then there's like two other little pockets on the inside. Oh, it's so exciting. Toothpaste and toothbrush go in one. My super lightweight cut off comb. That may have made me look worse. And, a roll of floss. So that's my toiletries on the inside. And then the outside is, again, more pooping stuff. I got my toilet paper crushed up and rolled in there. There's some wet ones in there that are antibacterial, as well as some compressed paper towels that rehydrate into a full thing. And that is everything that's in my pack. When I weighed this last night before I went to bed, it came in at 27.25 or 0.5 pounds, which still isn't super lightweight. That's not my base weight, that's the everything weight. When I subtracted food and fuel and water, I was in the like 17-ish range, but 
there's some pieces of gear, like I said, that I wouldn't normally bring. So when I subtracted those, I was in the 15 pound range, which is huge for me. I was really hoping to hit that like 14 pound range, but that's okay. I'm pretty excited with all of this stuff. I'm going to dial in this system a little bit more with a few other changes and alterations as I go along. But so far this is 2020 and I'm pretty happy with it. If you'd like to see all of this gear in all of its glory on this trip that I'm on right now, you can click this video, which is the trip that I'm on right now. If you'd like to see a breakdown of all the different pieces of gear, you can click this playlist right here and I will add to that more as I review these systems along the way. I hope you guys are having some awesome adventures and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. You got it.